Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And with this one, we are going to be covering the changes coming into Shadowlands Season 4. This is kind of the last segment of the expansion. This was a patch that I was worried about that wasn't going to get enough attention and with wrath of lich king coming out and all the attention towards it i was really worried about what was going to happen with the state of the game as far as class balance there's going to be a wide sweeping amount of changes moving forward into this patch though thankfully uh, to try and kind of create a new meta give opportunities to new specs across all content of the game so we're going to be covering those class changes in this video specifically as we scroll down you'll see massive changes towards all of the mythic plus dungeons and tunings and we will finally get down into classes you can see the first change is that starfall is just going to be doing 15 percent increased damage they do down the road have plans to try and make starfall more competitive through another means but this is kind of just the best way to do it right now this means possibly more competitive options and viability in pve as well as i'm very interested to check out the necro lord boomkin build that i've been kind of trying to make work for this entire expansion perhaps this buff is going to be enough and especially with some buffs to some other classes that could synergize with that possible build survival hunter is seeing buffs to its raptor strike mongoose bite and kill command damage by 15 percent meanwhile its set bonus is going to be reduced by 10 percent on its wildfire bomb bonus damage wildfire bomb and any wildfire infusion variants of wildfire bomb now deal reduced damage when hitting more than eight targets the tooltip will update it to reflect this in the future patch so taking down its cleave damage, its AOE damage, but its single target is going to be going up by 15%, giving you more consistent damage in PvP specifically. Uh, and in PvE, it's just trying to bring down its kind of potency in terms of its AOE damage. So overall, makes sense uh, and a good change for the game. Arcane Mage is going to be seeing clear casting's duration increased by five seconds. The note reads, we are increasing the duration of clear casting to minimize scenarios where the buff would fall off without the opportunity to gain the value. This is a primarily PvP concern, but we did not feel there was a reason to make it PvP exclusive. So this is just, again, Arcane getting a lot of PvP attention in this. There's more further down. Windwalker is going to be getting a 5% damage buff to its single target. While they say that they're happy uh, with prior single target changes that have resulted in making Windwalker a powerful option in a broad spectrum of situations. However, as a result, their, or sorry, it was reduced by 5%. Their total contribution ends up being slightly too strong in areas where their AOE strengths can be brought to bear. This change is not intended to remove those strengths, but ensure they're not too far ahead of the pack. So again, we've seen Windwalker kind of spinning crane kick one shots throughout the entire expansion, bringing down 5% also because of Mythic Plus uh, reasons. Makes a lot of sense here. It is only 5%, so the implications in PvP might be pretty minor protection paladin is getting a five percent armor buff as well as the holy shield uh, talent is going to increase your block chance to 20 percent and do note that you can block spells with this and it's one of the main reasons that prop paladin is really obnoxious in pvp so prop paladin viability in pvp could be absolutely ridiculous even just a five percent block change on this shadow is receiving buffs to mind seer shadow crash and searing nightmare trying to increase shadow priest's aoe possibilities here moving into the final patch not really a big change in pvp as a result of this other than potentially shadow crash um, but again trying to focus on their viability in aoe situations destruction is only getting a five percent increase in chaos bolt damage in pve it is not going to be receiving that in pvp it is also getting a 20 percent incinerate as well as immolate buff so possible necro lord destruction builds with incinerate damage could be viable here conflagrate only getting a 10 percent buff in pve and not pvp trying to focus away from chaos bolt and conflagrate uh, at the moment for pvp reasons although i don't really find destruction nearly as obnoxious anymore uh, blasphemy is also not now no longer going to grant reign of chaos so this is destruction kind of being the top dog in mythic plus uh, and getting addressed here uh, by removing those synergies um, and then buffing their incinerate and immolate damage giving them more filler damage it might mean that you fall off as an option of mythic plus and pvp I don't know if it's enough to really kind of bring you to the top of the tables over demonology, especially with the changes that are coming for demonology and affliction. Uh, protection warriors ignore pain. Absorption is increased by 30%, and the absorption cap is now based on maximum health, was twice the ignore pain. Uh, we find protection warriors are struggling with magic and unblockable forms of incoming damage, so trying to create more uh, diversity amongst the tank specs in PvE. And then when we scroll down to the bottom of the list, we get into the PvP-specific changes. Death Knight Spell Warden is now going to be only a 15% uh, increased effectiveness from the spell warding down from 50%. So I don't know if this is half of the mind numbing, half of the absorb um, specifically. 
but death knights were incredibly powerful into spellcasters so with this talent being addressed even at all i'm very pleased they're also going to be nerfing the conduit brutal grasp in pvp which is the abomination's limb uh being 40 to 50 percent of their overall damage just pop slappy hands people die uh so i think this change makes a lot of sense um moving forward there's a lot of other changes they're going to be bringing down demon hunters consistent damage by nerfing the dancing with fate conduit to 75 percent so they're going to be doing less damage with their blade dance um, by 25 percent mages deathborn is getting nerfed kind of strange nerf but by five percent i think it makes sense because of the mage changes later on encanter's flow talent now uh no longer has a reduced effect when engaged in pvp combat this is maybe to try and move mages away from rune of power and get more sustained damage which is a good sign like most of these changes are a really good sign for the direction of tuning and pacing for pvp specifically that is going to create a more exciting gameplay than just kind of like oh i got spiked and i'm one percent and then well one button i'm back to full health kind of like immediate juddering uh shuddering of damage and healing so these types of directional changes is a good trajectory kind of wait and see it i'll have to wait and see it play out similarly arcane missiles for arcane mage is getting buffed by 15 percent then remember the five percent longer um clear casting phase fire blazing soul is finally being addressed uh the blazing barrier from blinking is going to be 50 percent less effective Fire Mage survivability is continuing to be higher than we would like, so you're targeting Blazing Soul to address this while keeping the overall feel of Mage gameplay intact. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if it's still the best spec in the game with these changes to Arcane as well as Frost, because now we can see Ice Lance damage getting buffed by 15% and Frozen Orb by 20%. The Frozen Orb portion of this is maybe less impactful, but the Ice Lance could be some pretty chunky Ice Lances. Uh, Frost Mage has fallen off a bit, at least within the current meta, with the changes to Death Knight and the nerfs to Death Knight. There's some maybe some possibility here for Frost Mage moving forward in Season 4. Mist Reaver is getting a 25% buff to its Blackout Kick and Rising Sun Kick. This is really small. I don't even know if these spells are still going to be strong enough to kill a totem, let alone to justify contributing and compromising your position to use to attack somebody. Um, it's it's in the right area uh, where monks need offense, but I I really think they just got to give them more stuff. Hopefully when that Dragonflight talent tree comes out, there's going to be some new goodies for the offensive capabilities of the Mistweaver monk. I don't know if this is going to really do much. Retribution Paladin is seeing a big shift in its damage. Blade of Justice is getting increased by 20% in PvP. Crusader Strike is getting buffed by 30% in PvP. Hammer of Wrath is getting buffed by 15% in PvP. And this is all only off the back of a 5% nerf to the Avenging Wrath damage increase healing and critical strike chance in PvP. So... Rets could be a sustained damage monster. I feel like a lot of the top PvP players have been requesting for damage to be shifted more into sustained damage, so this makes sense. But a 5% offset on your burst with this much increase on your flat main abilities could be a big deal. Crusade is also being nerfed, and I'm not sure if this is like an anticipatory nerf where Avenging Wrath is nerfed, so everybody just specs Crusade to get rid of that compensation. Uh, but Crusade is really not played at the moment at all, and it's a pretty hefty nerf. Well, it's 25%, whereas the base one's only 5 So gonna have to wait and see uh holy priest has seen really big nerfs greater fate is going up to a 60 second cooldown from 45 their set bonus is um going to increase the healing of your holy word spells by 24 percent down from 36 to so 12 percent nerf on their set bonus their flash heal is getting 10 percent nerf their heal is getting a 10 percent nerf it's basically reverting most of the things that holy priest had applied to them before this patch but no their chastise was also recently nerfed so this has really big implications to have holy priest kind of fall off the face of the earth possibly uh, Rogue, they're going to be targeting the legendary that reduces your cooldowns when you vanish. Instead of giving you 20 seconds off the cooldowns, only 10. I would have really liked to see some nerfs towards the honor talents for Outlaw Rogue based on giving them way too much stamina. I think their HP is too high. Being a counter to melee DPS, sure, but just passively being immune to casters as well as having so many evasions for melee DPS, they're really oppressive defensively. I feel like players are... The reason Outlaw is underrepresented is because players are either using it to try and get tournament earnings because it's just so easily abused with how powerful and forgiving it is, or for players who would not be able to be able to make it work as subtlety or assassination to abuse to get rating that they'd otherwise not be able to get. That's why it's underrepresented. A lot of the rogues that can play sub would rather play it because it's more fun, fits within the playstyle of subtlety rogues. So I, I would have really liked to see more of a directional change for Outlaw, and that's just not here. Septic Shock, effectiveness reduced by 50% PvP combat, which was a massive increase towards uh, sepsis damage. Probably means uh, rogues are going to shift into Necrolord. Again, kind of forcing all the classes into more of sustained damage-oriented roles, which could make for fun gameplay. We'll have to wait and see. 
Subtlety is getting a 10% eviscerate damage nerfed in PvP. Uh, and you can see that they are hoping that this is going to target um, the overperforming specs because all three specs uh, are performing really well for Rogue. Restoration Shaman's getting a buff on your set bonus. Now the chain heals coming from your totems are going to be healing at maximum value. Warlock Health Funnel is getting buffed by 20%. So if teams are targeting down your pet, uh, this is going to assist you in being able to help your pet. I'm not sure if this also means that your health is going to be sacrificed 20% more. So it might be like, a risk reward thing to try and stabilize your pet and then here towards affliction we're seeing massive damage increase 15 percent buff to unstable affliction as well as a 20 percent increase to the dispel of an unstable affliction but it can no longer critically strike as well as corruption getting a 30 percent damage buff but in compensation for your dark soul dealing 10 percent less increase to your haste from 20 to 30 or from down from 30 to 20 so again shifting the damage out of the cooldown into their base spells this is something that has been requested for a long time wait and see if we play it off the calculations are all there um to have this feel the way that it could feel and this could have great synergies with that starfall buff that i was talking for balanced druids maybe resto shaman boomkin warlock we might finally have a meta with that again because that comp has been pretty much dead for a while it was one of my favorite comps the dot and rot going for triple kills and trying to stay alive while your dots do all the work so if that is the case could happen i'm very interested to check out that meta and then demonology Kelf call fell hunter is getting an increase to 30 seconds from 24 demon Demonology has a huge amount of annoying crowd controls that they can constantly lock somebody down with. So increasing the cooldown of that so you're not constantly locked down the entire time while offsetting it and trying to give you some abilities and tools to assist with your pet being tunneled makes a lot of sense. So I am very happy that uh, we are getting changes here moving into the next season because I was really worried that we weren't. Uh, interested to check it out. Still think some specs maybe got off again scot-free. I don't know how Outlaw Rogue keeps keeps kind of slipping by with just like slaps on the wrist um, and not kind of like a complete directional change. But these are a good sign for the trajectory. Do have possibilities for a new meta. So I'm definitely going to be checking it out to see what happens. Would have really liked to see gear scaling in this patch. So it's just make any character you want. Try every build that you want. Make it really accessible. They're not scaling up the legendaries and the conduits, so you're not going to worry about grinding that stuff. But even just the base item levels of PvP, um, I would have liked to have seen that dragon flight system implemented for gear where items all just from PvP scale up to max so we can just kind of jump in and we can all just play whatever we want, try and experiment and do different things without having to do all that honor grinding. But it seems like that's just not going to be possible um, at the moment, unfortunately. But regardless, I do want to try some of these dot comps out here. Shadow Priest also just recently got buffs so maybe some shadow aff affliction stuff like that uh, that hasn't been viable in the meta for a long time either way thank you very much for watching the video if you want to stay up to date with news and changes to everything related to world of warcraft then make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss a beat and you're ahead of the competition and without anything left to say thank you very much and i will see you in the next video